Hello everyone, this is Frank Damore with the End Times Research Ministry. Today is April the 5th, the 2017. I want to thank the people who came to watch the true story for Hollywood that points to Christ. I knew that when I put up this video, it would provide hope to a lot of people, and I'm already starting to see a response from the people who saw that video. And I'm praying that others would see it as well, and that they would be encouraged to turn to Christ during their trials and their tribulations as well. I'm going to post some of the comments that have already been made, but hopefully that will encourage you to check out this true story. Here at the End Times Research Ministry, I provide you with my documentary, The Last Chronicles of Planet Earth. And you can get that by going to the address below. There will be a link at my site. Just click the link and you can get the book today for absolutely free. There's one thing about my ministry. I don't keep people in the dark. What I'm doing is bringing people out of the darkness and bringing the word of the Lord, the light of what God has shown us concerning the last days. And part of the last days message, a very specific message, had to do with a rebuilding of a Jewish temple. And for those of you who don't know anything about the Jewish traditions or the Jewish history, the Jews have already had two temples, one that was destroyed by Athanasius Epiphanes, and then another temple that was destroyed in 70 AD by the Romans. Now let me throw something else in the mix that Jesus said before the second temple was actually destroyed. Like I said, 100% of everything Jesus prophesied comes to pass. Look what he said there in Matthew chapter 24 verses 1 and 2. And Jesus went out from the temple and was going on his way and his disciples came to him to show him the buildings of the temple. But he answered and said unto them, You see all these things, do you not? Truly I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. 70 AD, the Romans under Titus went in, destroyed that temple. As a matter of fact, they set it on fire, and the, the heat of the fire melted the gold that was in the temple area, or the temple. And what happened is the gold melted down on, the, on these huge boulders that they built for the temple. And after the war or the siege was over, Titus told the people, his soldiers, to go and scrape all the gold off the big boulders. And when it was all done, not one stone stood upon another exactly like Jesus Christ had prophesied about. So if he's good on his temple being destroyed before it was destroyed, and if he tells us it's going to come back, count on it, it's coming back. And of course, in the Old Testament, we see a third temple is going to be rebuilt just prior to the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so when you saw the temple being rebuilt, you would know time is really, really short. And so let me start off with Daniel 9.27. Now, if you know this prophecy, please bear with me. I'm just going to go through it real quick, give you the latest update on what's happening, and then you could pass this information on to other people like Christians are supposed to be doing. And this is what Daniel 9.27 says. Then he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. Now, of course, if you don't know anything about the prophecy, a covenant is going to be established by the Antichrist in the last days. The period of one week, when you do a study, you'll learn that it's a period of one seven-year period. So, in other words, a covenant will be established for a period of seven years years. Now look what it says. He shall bring an end to sacrifice and offering. And so what we know is covenant established, period of seven years. In the middle of the week or in the middle of that seven-year period of time, or if you want to, 1,260 days or exactly three and a half years, this Antichrist who confirms this covenant is going to stop the sacrifices and the offerings. So in other words, 
What should we be looking for? Number one, a rebuilding of the temple. And number two, the Jews to begin their sacrifices and their offerings the same exact way that they did when Jesus Christ was alive. I don't know about you, but to me, when I see these things, I get pretty excited because I know that our time is limited without Jesus on this planet. And so when you see the sacrifices and the offerings, you better get ready because Jesus Christ is coming back without a question. Now, what are the odds that almost 2,000 years ago and even longer now, Daniel was in the Old Testament, and I'm going to show you a couple of scriptures in the New Testament that points also to this Antichrist in this temple. What are the odds of that long of a period of time and then all of a sudden you start seeing the footprints of the sacrifices coming back, the offerings coming back, just like Jesus said, just like in the Old Testament said, and fulfillment. Well, <laughs> let me tell you something. We're right on the cusp of it, and this is the news that I want to show you today. So what about this confirming a covenant? Well, a lot of people that are reading prophecy and teaching prophecy, they really haven't studied it in its full context. And uh, I've seen and I've heard a lot of people say that the Antichrist is going to make a covenant, and then he's going to break it. Well, if you read the scriptures, that's not what it says. He's going to confirm a covenant. So apparently there's some agreement already established that I talked about before, and the Antichrist will confirm that covenant, whatever it is. It could be one of these old peace initiatives that over the years that the Palestinians and the Israelis have put together. For example, 1993, the Oslo Agreement. Who knows what it's going to be? All I know is he will confirm the covenant, give us okay to it, and it will be for a period of seven years. So before I get to the news, just let me say this. If you see a peace agreement in the news, and it's not for a period of seven years, then you'll understand, you'll have knowledge. That's not the one that Daniel 9.27 talks about because we're supposed to be looking for a period of, seven years all right so that very very specific so prophecy is very very specific and it is in our face today because we are the generation is going to see the lord jesus christ come back and this third temple has been in the news continuously and even more so now as the years advance now in my book that you can download today for free you're going to see all this kind of you're going to see all the information that I've accumulated for you so that you can understand and be ready for what's to come shortly and so I'm going to go right in now to these animal sacrifices and the rebuilding of the temple the newest news that just came in now the newest news was just released 12 hours ago by the WND. Look what the headline says. Passover sacrifice back in Jerusalem. And right below that, lamb to be slaughtered near Temple Mount. Are you getting excited yet? <laughs> you should be, especially if you're a Christian. And if you're not a Christian, please pay attention. Because if you're not with Jesus Christ, you're against him. And if you're against Jesus Christ, and for example, if he would decide to come back tomorrow, and you don't have Jesus as your Savior, you're going to be left behind to see everything that the Lord revealed to us in the book of Revelation, including the Antichrist, who's going to attack anybody who doesn't receive Jesus Christ as his personal or her personal Savior. So considering the fact that Daniel talks about this Antichrist stopping the sacrifices, and now you see that the sacrifices are beginning, I'm hoping that you'll understand God's word is true. Let's see what the article has to say. Jewish activists seeking to rebuild the temple in Jerusalem will be conducting a ritual Passover sacrifice of a lamb in a nearby park in full view of the Temple Mount. 
The ceremony is expected to rise opposition and protest from the Islamic Waf, which the Israeli government permits to administer visits and activity on the Temple Mount, known to Muslims as the Noble Sanctuary. The sacrifice ceremony this year is scheduled to take place closer to the Temple Mount than previous rituals, which were held in the Mount of Olives across a valley. So every year they're getting closer and closer to the goal where, where is it? It's where the first and the second temple once stood. They're in Jerusalem, just like it was during the time of Antonius Epiphanes when he wrecked that temple and then the Romans in 70 AD. They're moving closer to the fulfillment of prophecy, the things that we were warned about in the scriptures. So take a look at this next sentence, considering the fact that the Lord told us the temple was going to be built. Temple Mount activists, some of whom are involved with the Passover sacrifice, are pushing to rebuild a Jewish temple in accordance with Bible prophecies. See, the Jews know what the word says. But what they don't realize, there's really no cause that they would have to start these sacrifices again. Because Jesus, when he went to the cross, died once and once for all. But the Jews who don't recognize Jesus Christ, they think that they have to continue with these sacrifices for forgiveness of sins. Of course, what we do know from the Bible is that the Jews are going to understand their mistake and they're missing the mark as far as who the Messiah really was. Because Jesus Christ was and is and will always be the Messiah for the world, including the Jews, which we know that they're going to find out during the tribulation period. Now, the article also comes with a video talking about the Kohim, which are the priests, by the way. And, of course, you can't have a sacrifice without people administering the services. And so just like in the Old Testament, the Jews had priests and they had a high priest that were doing the sacrifices and these offerings, so too now the Temple Institute has brought back an exact carbon copy of the same thing that they were doing during the first and the second temple sacrifices and services or their offerings. And here is a video explaining why the Temple Institute believes that the temple is going to be rebuilt and the institutions and the beginning of the sacrifices, which now they are practicing. One footstep away from the real thing. They're getting closer and closer to that Jerusalem area and the Temple Mount, which obviously anybody who knows Bible prophecy that has been studying this are going to really be blown away when they see Finally, on the Temple Mount, sacrifice is beginning, just like Jesus Christ said, just like in the Old Testament said in the book of Daniel. Watch the video. The Corban Pesach, Passover offering. It's a thing of the past. It can't be done in our time. It's not relevant for us. We don't have the Beit HaMikdash today. And anyway, we don't do Korbanot anymore. Just a minute. Not relevant today. Let's look at the Torah itself. You shall observe this matter as a decree for yourself and for your children forever. In fact, Korban Pesach and Bris Mila, circumcision, are the only positive commandments whose non-compliance carries the serious spiritual penalty of currents. They are equal. What Jew today would not circumcise his son? God forbid. Okay, but what about impurity? How could we bring a Korban Pesach if we're all Tamei today? What about the Kohanim? How do we even know who's a real Kohen today? And don't we need to know the exact location of the Mizbeach, the altar on Har Habayit, the place where the altar is supposed to stand? Well, did you know that great Gedolim, such as Rabbi Akiva Eger and the Chassam Sofer, were mamish concerned about renewing the Korban Pesach? And they carried on a lengthy correspondence on the subject. And in their responsa, they found solutions to all these halachic issues. They concluded that the mitzvah of bringing the Korban Pesach is equally binding upon the Jewish people when they're in a state of Tuma as when they are Tahor, based on the principle of Tuma Hutra Bitzibor, 
that bringing the offering is permitted when the entire congregation is impure. Concerning how to know who is a real Kohen today, the Chasim Silver concluded, based on the concept of Chazaka, that Kohanim in our time are kosher for the Avodah in the Beit HaMikdash and can bring the Korban Pesach today. Now, lest you say, but we need the presence of a Kohen Gadol adorned with its sits on his forehead. Well, among other famed authorities, the Maharat Chayis established that in the absence of a Kohen Gadol, it is sufficient for a Kohen Hedyot, an ordinary Kohen, to offer the Korban Pesach while dressed in his Big Day Kohuna, his priestly garments. In Jerusalem, kosher priestly garments have already been prepared and are ready for use today. With regards to not having a Beit HaMikdash today, the Maharat Chayis cites the Rambam and states that even if the temple is not yet rebuilt, an altar can be built in accordance with historical precedence. And in his seminal work, Drishat Sion, Rabbi Tzvi Hirsch Kalasher outlines a plan for measuring and establishing the exact location of the Mizbeach on the Temple Mount. Today, under the present circumstances, all this could actually be done. Throughout the generations, as the Torah testifies, the Korban Pesach has always signaled a new beginning for the nation. So it was in the time of Yehoshua, of Chizkiyahu, of Yeshayahu, and of Ezra. In each instance, the Pesach offering heralded national rejuvenation and spiritual renewal. The Korban Pesach, synonymous with redemption itself, is the most powerful expression of Jewish identity and Israel's mission to fearlessly slaughter idolatry. It represents the nation's true faith in God. And like the bris milah, it conveys our eternal confidence. Thus it can be seen as the national circumcision of the Jewish people. The Korban Pesach is a commandment binding on every generation. Check the sources below for yourself. Let's get serious about fulfilling our eternal obligation and be honest when our children ask us, why is this night different from all other nights? It's the Korban Pesach. So there you have it. The Temple Mount Institute talking about the sacrifices and bringing back the Third Temple. Hey, look, it doesn't get any clearer than that. What we're seeing is exactly what is supposed to take place. And we were warned plenty of time before it actually has taken place. So let's continue. The Passover sacrifice ceremony has been conducted annually for the past 15 years, beginning as a semi-underground event in which an animal was sacrificed a few days before Passover. So they were beginning... 15 years ago to go underground in secret to do this. The reenactment, however, is now the most important event of the year for the Temple Mount activists. They're not in secret anymore, and you'll see that when you get into my book, when you read all of the information, the timeline that I set up for you, showing you where it started and where we've come over these years. Now, in recent years, the municipality has supported the event and an inspector from the veterinary service has been on hand to supervise. And the reason why they did this is because when they were trying to do these animal sacrifices, the animal rights group stopped them. And so this group of people from the Temple Mount Institute, they went to court. They actually won the case. And so they can start up these animal sacrifices in practice for the real thing. Goes on, hundreds of people, including Knesset members, rabbis, and other public figures, have attended. Now, this next paragraph is very interesting, and I'll tell you why. It says this The ceremony comes at a time when Arab neighbors, on behalf of the Palestinian Authority, are preparing to submit yet another resolution to the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization challenging Israel's sovereignty over the whole of the city of Jerusalem. In the book of Zechariah, just read chapter 12, you'll see that Jerusalem is going to become a burdensome stone for the world. The Jews own Jerusalem. And you probably heard a lot of news about the uprising over Israel's prime minister allowing new construction in the city of Jerusalem. And what the Palestinians are so afraid of is, yes, the Jews will build their third temple. And they should be concerned about that because 
It's going to happen. You can't stop it. And anybody who thinks that it's not going to happen, they're disagreeing with what God says, and that's not a very good position to be in because everything that the Lord tells us in prophecy, 100% of it, not 99, not 87, not 5%, 100% of what the Lord talks about in prophecy always comes to pass. Now, these prophecies concerning the rituals that they're going to start up, the sacrifices and the offerings, we're in the midst of seeing it being fulfilled. It hasn't been completely fulfilled yet, but it will be. This is exciting. The footprints that you're seeing right now, like I said, are the road to get us there. I'm going to replay a very, very short section of this video again because it has to do with measuring exactly where they're going to have these services or these sacrifices in the exact location. I'll show the importance, but listen again to what he says about the measuring. And in his seminal work, Rishad Sion, Rabbi Tzvi Hirsch Kalisher outlines a plan for measuring and establishing the exact location of the Mizbeach on the Temple Mount. So they're talking about measuring an exact location. Let me go back now to show you what Jesus has to say about this. In Revelation chapter 11, verses 1 and 2, it says this, And there was given me a reed like unto a rod. And the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar. Now, this is what this video was talking about, the altar and everything that's going to be taking place where they're going to have their burnt offering. And them that worship therein. But the court which is without the temple, leave out. And measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall be trotted underfoot forty and two months, or exactly three and a half years. So what the Lord is talking about, if you go over to Jerusalem right now, you'll see the Dome of the Rock is there. And many believe that the measuring of this outer court is where the temple, the third temple, will be established. So let's go on. I'm going to show you a couple more verses just in case you are new. Look in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4. Again, talking about the Antichrist, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God, look at this now, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. So what Paul is telling us here is this man, this Antichrist that Daniel talks about, is going to be sitting in the temple. Well, where's that temple going to be? We are told it's going to be in Jerusalem. Where? On the Temple Mount. Exactly where they're trying to go right now. And of course, this guy is going to think that he's better than God. He's going to force the whole world to worship him. And if you don't worship him, guess what? The Bible is very clear that you will be killed if you don't bow down and worship this Antichrist man. There's one more scripture I want to share with you, and that comes from Matthew chapter 24, verse 15, where Jesus says, When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Where's the holy place? Right there in the Temple Mount. Whosoever readeth, let him understand. So if you're studying the word of the Lord, you come across this passage, you're going to know what he's talking about. Because hopefully you've already passed through the Old Testament. You know the book of Daniel. And you know what Jesus says here in Matthew 24, 15. You put them together and then you just watch. Why do you watch? Because Jesus commanded us. Keep on the watch. Why? Because he wanted us to get excited knowing our time is drawing very, very short without the Messiah physically walking on this earth. And so now that we're seeing the preparations from exactly what the Lord is talking about, you should be excited. These are exciting times. And it's just not this prophecy that's being underway to be fulfilled or the completion of this prophecy. The things that the Lord revealed to us in chapter 24, all of the things, we're in the birth pangs of all those things right now. So we are very, very, very close. 
I'm hoping that this information will enlighten you, light up the, the light bulb of your heart and your mind to want to know more about Jesus Christ before he comes back. But here's the most important part. This is the bottom line. Trust Jesus. Give him a chance. He is God. He wants you to come to him so that he can bring you to where he is in heaven. And without recognizing and receiving Jesus Christ, you're never going to make it through those doors. You're never going to make it to the Father in Jesus Christ. Please receive Jesus as your Savior today. Please keep your eyes on the news. Watch what's going on in Israel. Because right now, and I'm going to cover this in another video that I'll post today, they're talking about the peace talks that have been dead now for four or five years. They want to regenerate those peace talks. So this is very interesting because it does go hand in hand where the Lord said when they're calling for peace and safety, then sudden destruction will come. Now, since I mentioned Zechariah chapter 12, let me go over that and I'll connect the news today with Zechariah chapter 12 as well. It says this, The burden of the word of the Lord for Israel, saith the Lord, which stretch forth the heavens and layeth the foundations of the earth and formeth the spirit of man within him. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all the people around about, when they shall be in the siege both against Judah and against Jerusalem. And in that day will I make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people. All that burden themselves with it shall be cut in pieces, though all the people of the earth, now get this, be gathered together against it. Who's in Israel? The Jews. Who is the world coming against? Just look at the articles coming out of the UN and what the UN is doing against the nation of Israel. This is one of the reasons why Donald Trump doesn't want any more funds going to the UN because they are focused on and continually condemning the nation of Israel. So the Jews are being attacked, not just in Israel, but wherever they live. And this is part of the prophecy. And this is one of the reasons why we're starting to see an influx of Jews from around the world, which again is another fulfillment of Bible prophecy. Here's just a small glimpse of what's taken place. Sweden, anti-Semitism has crossed all red lines. World Zionist organization leader says Sweden's government must stand up and ensure safety of all the citizens, which right now they are not doing. After a Jewish center in Sweden closed in response to an anti-Semitic and neo-Nazi threats, World Zionist Organization Vice President and Department for Countering Anti-Semitism Head Yaakov Hegel said all red lines have been crossed and the Muslim community was chasing after Jews. This is just a continuation of the previous plots, Hegel said. Sweden's anti-Semitism has crossed all red lines. The recent events are only the latest in a long line of incitement and blood labels. People are sowing an unjust fear of Jews, and the government is closing its eyes to everything which relates to Jews and Israel. Jews are running from here because they're scared of the rising anti-Semitism. There are anti-Israel campaigns which focus on libels claiming Jews steal and sell Palestinian limbs. There have been incidents in which local Muslims literally chase after Jews, and the government supports an anti-Israel stance unequivocally supporting the Palestinians and Islamic countries. All of these should make us do some soul-searching with regards to our relationship with this country. I call on the Swedish government to take responsibility and ensure the safety of its citizens, Hegel concluded. On Monday, a Jewish community center in northern Sweden closed after Jewish parents said the recent anti-Semitic incidents and threats caused them to worry about the safety of sending their children to the center's schools. 
Look, it's a fact. If you've been watching the news, you can see how the Jews have been targeted. This shouldn't come as a surprise to anyone who's read the Bible and is familiar with what we're supposed to be seeing in the last days. Just like the coming of the third temple and their sacrifices, we are seeing this. But it's going to get much worse for the Jews the closer we get to the tribulation period. So, this is Frank DeMore with the End Times Research Ministry. Hope to see you again. Tell your friends about the information that you received. Pass it on. It's a good thing to do for Jesus.